Hello, how y'all doing today? My name is Bernie Thompson and today we're here to take a look at a 2006 Ford Escape. This Escape has a 2.3 four-cylinder engine that's misfiring. This is the fourth shop that this vehicle has been to to fix this problem. They have put a lot of pieces on this vehicle to try to fix this misfire. So we want to properly diagnose it. So the first thing I want to do is get a scan tool on this and get some basic data. So let's go ahead and get that scan tool connected. Okay guys, I got the scan tool data up. Let's take a look at this data. Okay, so right away I'm switching rich lean. I'm centered, which means I got good fuel control and neither trim long term or total trim doesn't have a problem. I do have low vacuum at 12 inches, 13 inches. I'm a mile high and that's even low for me. So that really is something to be concerned about. I have three DTCs. So let's go and look at those. So I got cylinder one misfire detected. I've got ignition coil C primary and I've got ignition coil four primary circuit. So the cylinder I'm setting a code for is one. Now that's why I'm here. So since I'm here for that, what I want to do now is I want to go ahead and I want to pull mode six and I want to see what mode six is saying what cylinders are misfiring. So let's do that. Okay, so I've got cylinder one, 54 misses, so I do have misfires on one. I've got cylinder two, I've got misfires on two. Cylinder three, misfires on three. Cylinder four, misfires. Guys, every single cylinder in this engine is missing. One's the worst, but they're all misfiring. And the engine, or mode six, sees that they're all misfiring. So we're probably not looking for one, but multiple. The car runs rough right now. I can feel it running rough. So let's go ahead and let's look at some data. So we don't have much trim. So we got long-term zero, short-term 2%. So I want to go do something else. I want to go and I want to get some PIDs. I want to get APID, mass error. So the mass error is, is 3 grams and I'm expecting 2.3. That's what this engine is. That's way too much airflow in my mind right away for what I've got. Let's go to digital. Okay, so the mass airflow is 2.3 point, it's going up and down. So I've got way too much air with low vacuum and I'm not trimming. So if this was too much air, I'd have to be taking away trim and I'm not. So it must really be reading additional air with a low vacuum reading and a misfire on all the cylinders. It makes me think the cam timing is bad right away. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go get in the crank and the ignition coil and I want to verify what cylinders are misfiring and I want to get the cam and I want to compare the cam and crank so we can try to figure out what's going on with this car. So let's go ahead and get the scope connected. Okay, so I pulled up a wiring diagram and I found where the things are I wanted to hook up. I found the crank sensor, it's at the front of the dampener, so I got into the crank sensor at the dampener under the car and then I got channel two, that's channel one yellow, channel two is on the number one coil, channel three is on the intake cam sensor. So now let's go over here and look at the data. First I want to make sure I'm connected on the first three channels, that's what I'm using and they're connected. So now I want to come over and I want to just make sure we've got the data and it's coming up okay. And it is. So we've got the crank sensor and we've got the ignition. So now is what I want to do is come over here and I want to run an algorithm. So we're going to take this, this crankshaft data with a trigger of the number one and we're going to run an algorithm on that and it's going to be able to see the crank velocity changes so we can see what cylinders are missing. So I never like to believe a scan tool. If it tells me I got a code for cylinder one, I got to prove that cylinder one's really missing, either through a tailpipe sensor or through crank. 
but I want to prove the misfire always a second way other than scan data. So we're going to we're going to come over here to tools, and right here we're going to run this in this. So I got my firing order. I'm on trigger one. We're going to start it, and it's going to run. And now it's going to run and analyze that data, and it's going to tell us what's missing. So all the cylinders are misfiring. And you can see these big drops right here. So if we come in and we look, do you see how that's a miss? That's a miss. These are misses. So the software went in and it's looking for what trigger, what cylinder. The triggers are up here. It identifies them, what cylinder it is. And then it's comparing the crank velocity. That's a miss, miss, miss. All the cylinders on this are missing. That's what mode six told me, but now I've confirmed it. So now I know all the cylinders are really missing. So now is what I want to do is I want to go back over here and I want to get some data. So now we're going to go ahead and get the data and I want to come in here to my zoom window. Okay, so now we're going to look at this. So we've got our ignition, we've got our crank. Now I'm interested in where the cam is. See the green? So I'm going to break these out, I'm going to push all, and that separates these automatically, the channels, so it layers them for me. I want to bring that green one down, it's a little higher than I want it. Okay, so now I want to get the cursor. I want to put a cursor right through the upper peak, and now I want to draw a box around that. Now we're going to count teeth. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. About 14 teeth. So if I come from the break, the missing index, I'm going to count each one of the crank and I want to see where the highest point crosses on the crank. It's about 14, 14 and a half. Now I have a known good waveform. Right here. So let's look at what this one is. So here we've got this, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So that cam is in time. It's not out of time. The cam's in time. But I think the cams are out. So what do you do now? Now you've got to realize something right now. This is where one of these shops made a major mistake. They check the cam timing and it shows good but you're only checking the intake cam. There isn't a sensor on the exhaust cam, so you never checked it. That doesn't mean the cams are in time, that means the intake cam is in time. There's no, there's no target wheel on the exhaust, so what I need to do is pull a spark plug out, and we need to do a compression analysis on this engine to check the exhaust cam, because I think the cams are out of time. That's what all the data is telling me right now. So let me go ahead and get a spark plug out of the engine and then we're going to test it. So I'm going to take out the coil for one. We'll do one. Now you can see they put new coils on, new spark plugs as well apparently. The injectors apparently have also been replaced on this engine trying to fix this misfire and that's just a few of the pieces. Okay, always terminate your coil. Make sure that the spark can't jump out of the coil because if it hits this pressure transducer, it'll never work again. So we want it some way to terminate this. I'm gonna terminate it up here to a ground plane. And now what I wanna do is I wanna put on the intake pressure sensor. Okay guys, I'm gonna use a tailpipe pressure transducer and I don't want the Venturi. The Venturi is for finding a misfire when it's running. 
I want just the pressure pulses. So on this one, I'm gonna use just the straight hose. And now we're gonna get that plugged in. And so we've got a tailpipe pressure transducer in one. We've got an in-cylinder reading in channel three, and we got vacuum on four. We gotta set the scope up for that. So come over here and you see this PSI button? Push it, everything is loaded and it's zeroed. Now make sure your sensors are plugged into the scope before you hit the button because it's gonna zero it. Don't have the engine running or we won't have an accurate zero. So now is what we need to do is collect some data. So let me go ahead and start the car so we can try to figure out what's wrong with this vehicle. So here's my data, I'm getting compression waveforms, so that's good. We're going to stop that, we're going to get our zoom window. I want to get my cursors, put a cursor through each one, through each tower, mark it. Okay, look at that guys, that exhaust cam is out. That's cool. Do you see how this comes all the way down and then it took a sharp curve, and, but the curve is happening right at the bottom dead center mark? And do you see how the exhaust plateau, the whole plateau, is to the right of this? Well, that is showing the exhaust cam opening is late or it's retarded. So the exhaust cam is off. So now let's look at this. This pocket right here should be over here. That pocket should be over here. That's two to three teeth off because each, each tooth is worth 15 degrees. So for each 30 degree marker, that would be two teeth. So basically, we're off at least 30 degrees because the valve opened at bottom dead center. It should be between 30 and 60. So that's two to three teeth off right there. The intake cam, do you see where this started to fall almost at top dead center? That's on time. Do you see how it fell all the way in the first lowest position? I want that lowest position before 60. Now that's well before 60. It fell quickly and I'm good there. And then if I come over here, I can see right there if I drew down and I drew a line over, that's right where it starts to raise. That's where the valve closed and I started to build pressure. And that's about 60 and that's target. That's what I'm looking for, rule of thumb. This intake is in time. The exhaust is two, three teeth out of time. So the exhaust cam is the one that's off. Now, when you do this kind of work, we always do several different waveforms. Never just look at one, okay? So we want to look at a few different places. You always want to look at multiple places for your, when you're looking at pressures. And again, do you see how that whole exhaust ramp is to the right of the bottom dead center mark? And the bottom dead center mark is almost happening where the rise of the valve, where the valve opened. Well, that valve opening should be over here between 30 and 60. It should be here. In other words, that rise right there should be happening in the, the, between those two cursors, and it's not. Now since that's off, that's 30 degrees, each tooth is worth 15 degrees, rule of thumb. So basically that's two to three teeth off. And if we come over and we look at the intake, the intake fell about top dead center and the total fall is before 60. That's the total fall and I'm before 60. That opened timely. And when I closed over here, I'm about 60. The intake cam is timed. The exhaust cam is out of time. So the shop is going to need to tear this apart and retime the exhaust. That's what's wrong with this car. But rather than putting coils and spark plugs and injectors <coughs> and a computer in this car, maybe we need to diagnose it and try to diagnose it. I show, I laid out a very quick, accurate process here for diagnosing a cam. Always remember, guys, what you're testing. Look at what you're testing. If the cam sensor's only on one cam, you're only testing that cam if you're comparing a cam sensor to a crank sensor. 
you got to have sensors on both cams and those target wheels can move and the cams can move. This is a really good way to see where the cam is because these pressure changes are dynamic. They only change when I open a valve and I have enough time to change the volume in the system. The exhaust cam is out on this cam. It's a pretty quick, accurate diagnosis on this car. It'll save you a lot of heartache. Because, I mean, can you imagine the shop that did this? And you know, once you put on coils, then you go get an Excel coil so it has a higher hit so it doesn't miss as much. And different plugs and different injectors and a computer. And you still didn't fix the car. That's where many, many shops are. I go from shop to shop, and this is quite a common problem. The shop that this car is at is a pretty sharp shop. That's why it's here. It's here to be fixed. So that's what's wrong. And where you get tied up is if the shop checks the, the cam crank correlation and it shows it's right, they only check the intake cam, and the intake is on. It's the exhaust cam that's out, and you can't check it with a cam crank because there's not a cam sensor on the exhaust cam. In these instances, you really need to understand how pressure analysis works. It'll save you a lot of heartache. When the shop takes this apart, I'll come back over and we'll try to film this. But since this is not this shop's car, but it was brought from another shop, the other shop will probably take it and fix it now the vehicle's been diagnosed. But I'll try to get this car back so we can finish this video. But in case I don't, just follow the procedure that I did. I laid out a very logical approach to how you would diagnose a car like this. This is not that hard of a car to diagnose. It is if you don't understand some very fundamental basics. But that's why I make these videos. I'm trying to show you how to do the fundamentals and how to figure this stuff out quickly and accurately. If you do these kind of diagnosis and you use pressure transducers like this, you'll have good troubleshooting in your service space.